So next speaker is uh, Professor Igor Siutik from the University of Buffalo. And he's going to talk about uh, proximitized uh, two-dimensional materials. Thank you very much for this introduction. Uh, thank you also for the um, help with this power pointer. Somehow, I'm not sure if I will have enough power um, to get the presentation, so maybe I should cut it halfway through. There are two topics, so then there is a natural wave. Uh, everything uh, crashes to just stop. So thank you very much to the organizers. This is really very exciting um, workshop. It's a pleasure to be here. There are many uh, familiar people and experts, and I'm also learning a lot. Uh, this work has been done by uh, my collaborators at University of Buffalo. Some of them have left since. Alex, I think, is uh, scheduled to talk on Friday. Uh, Benedict Scharf uh, is now with Evelina. And uh, experiments have been done uh, by different groups. Uh, um, most of the results are related to the normal state, uh, but I will also briefly discuss towards the end some superconducting proximity effects. Uh, in terms of um, um, physics, many of the concepts have already been discussed by Stefan and Roland, so there isn't that much uh, to say except maybe superconducting part uh, has not been uh, covered that much. Um, so the motivation for studying proximity effects could be viewed by just this simple statement that grass is greener on the other side. Typically, we like what we don't have, whether this is neighbor's uh, grass, uh, neighbor's tree, car, etc. Even if you take, a, uh, for example, most successful material like silicon, we are usually not satisfied the way it is. We would like to alter it. And this change is often done through doping or functionalization. But what we are trying to argue is that proximity effects that have been known for almost 90 years can now be viewed more broadly. Just like doping, they are tools to transform large class of materials. So it's not just a set of very interesting and curious phenomena, but it is a general tool that allows us to transform materials. And what happens is that a uh, certain layer, certain region, can then inherit property from its neighbor. If we have then uh, multiple layers, we can then have interesting possibilities so that we have now emergent phenomena and properties that were not present in any of those individual regions. Uh, this can also give us many advantages as compared to doping. If you, for example, um, go back and think of this as a non-magnetic semiconductor, let's say gallium arsenide, and then you try to dope it magnetically, yes, you can introduce magnetism, but it will come at a huge cost of destroying mobility from, let's say, 2,000 to 1, and then also destroying completely optical properties. There is no luminescence. So uh, proximity effects can often have a gentler way of introducing new uh, properties, uh, without uh, maybe problems of disorder, inhomogeneities, uh, etc. What is also interesting is that we can uh, create um, topological properties by proximity effects. So we can introduce topological protection by carefully combining trivial materials. Uh, and we have seen part of that in the previous presentation. So the uh, presentation that I will uh, have will be in two parts. First one will be focused on magnetic proximity effects and uh, trying to emphasize the role of Coulomb interaction. And then the second one would be trying to discuss uh, what happens if we introduce superconducting region and if we have then possibility to create so-called uh, Majorana bound states. When we talk about magnetic proximity effects for the almost last 50 years, picture to use it was based on single particle description. And in almost all cases, this was working fine. Here is a uh, discussion of a proposal uh, that we for graphene. Here, uh, proximity can be done also with ferromagnetic metal, as long as we have additional layer, let's say boron nitride uh, or um, another layer of graphene to suppress uh, strong hybridization. What then uh, one can expect that the amount of proximity-induced spin polarization by gating can change not only in its magnitude, but also sign. So by gating, we can reverse proximity-induced uh, sign of spin polarization, 
related experiment was done in Roland's group. So if we switch from this usual description of single particle uh, picture to study magnetic proximity effects, uh, we can uh, see a need to maybe do something differently just guided by material. So if we go to TMDs and if we recognize these huge binding energies of excitons, clearly Coulomb interaction is crucial, it plays a role. But nevertheless, the early experiments on proximity effects in TMDs were still using single particle pictures. So my colleagues at Buffalo were considering following situations. So they were looking at uh, TMDs, tungsten-based ones, and they were trying to see what happens if they are placed on non-magnetic versus on uh, magnetic substrate. And they could then see signatures of presence of applied magnetic field or uh, a magnetic substrate in the reflectance spectra. And uh, when they use magnetic substrate, they could see that the valley degeneracy is much uh, more removed and that this uh, removal of valley degeneracy is closely following perpendicular direction of magnetization. In other words, this is a very nice uh, confirmation that indeed proximity effects is observed but the focus is then on this simple understanding that if we have outside of the plane magnetization, we are going to remove valley degeneracy, and therefore we may then have a hope to be able to better manipulate valley degrees of freedom. So some, somehow this in-plane um, magnetization really was not that of interest, and the question is uh, what else um, may we, uh, be missing because we know that excitons themselves, which are used here as a signature of magnetic proximity effects, are just not there at the level of single particle description. So what we wanted to do, we wanted then to establish a simple picture of uh, magnetic proximity effects that would include Coulomb interaction, that would be able to include excitons, and maybe this was the first example in the 50 years of studying um, magnetic proximity effects in all sorts of materials. So what we use is a relatively standard approach of uh, Bethe-Salpeter equation. And then if you look at this uh, kernel, there is a possibility that uh, outcome of magnetic substrate will not just be uh, at the single particle level, but there may be some magnetization effects in the uh, binding energies of excitons and, and other things. Uh, so then, from, from this approach, one can study various uh, observables. So, for example, absorption spectra. And if we uh, then try to see what could be interesting, we can just then summarize uh, a sketch of the situation. So we have uh, TMD on the top of magnetic substrate, where this magnetization, we expect, could uh, be along different directions. And specifically, if magnetization is in-plane, this seems to be an interesting uh, configuration because we are not removing valley degeneracy. So we want to also explore this boring situation of in-plane magnetization and see what happens if we rotate it uh, outside of the plane. And uh, what we can realize is that this problem is a problem of two, um, in general, two different quantization axes. Without magnetization, this strong spin orbit coupling out of the plane will give us a natural quantization axis, but if magnetization is now not collinear, then we have some confusion. Also, we have to then think about possible modifications of optical selection rules. So what used to be well-defined bright or dark exciton may no longer be the case, and if we now plot just the band edges for dark excitons that are optically forbidden, we see that as we change direction of um, magnetization, not only uh, there will be change in the spin splitting in the conduction and valence band, but also direction of the appropriate spins, which means that by changing direction of magnetization, what may have been optically inactive or forbidden transition could be allowed. Uh, so with this then picture, we can then try to see some limiting cases. And we can also try to compare what would magnetic proximity effect look like uh, if we use standard single particle description. 
So in this uh, small inset, uh, absorption spectra is given at a single particle level. Clearly, we have no excitonic peaks. Uh, we really do not see uh, how to understand the role of uh, magnetic substrate or proximity effect. So this is, I think, a clear signature that uh, at a single particle level, we do not have enough tools to describe what is going on. Uh, then the next uh, simple case is, let's forget about a magnetic substrate. Let's just look at the non-magnetic substrate. This gives us a reference understanding that we have A and B excitons. And then we go to the usual case of interest, which is magnetization out of plane. If you do that, just like uh, my colleagues were studying with uh, europium sulfide as their magnetic substrate, you see that the spin splitting in A and B excitons uh, is going in the opposite direction. So this is something that is uh, 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 experimentally known. But then if you go to the in-plane uh, boring case, when magnetization is just in-plane, we see that uh, there is another spectral feature. What was uh, initially forbidden as a dark exciton now can be visible. And this dark exciton is actually uh, robust in terms of the value that we may not know of, let's say, uh, Rajba uh, spin orbit coupling. So by uh, going into this direction of magnetization uh, in plane, where no um, valid degeneracy is removed, we can get some new features. We can get some. Uh, uh, interesting physics, and uh, there will be more discussions about use of beta salpeter equations uh, for studying magnetic proximity effects uh, in the next uh, presentation by Paolo. What I wanted to then mention is that even if we don't look at the magnetic uh, substrates, there are still puzzles and many things to be uh, understood uh, in TMDs, in their optical response, and at the end, maybe uh, predictions for some novel ex uh, excitations could be verified by adding magnetic substrates because magnetic substrates or um, uh, magnetic proximity effects could then distinguish uh, various proposed scenarios. So this work is done uh, um, and led by a group of Hanan Derry at the University of Rochester, and it recognizes a simple situation that energetically, in tungsten-based TMDs, uh, indirect excitons could be more favorable. You see that uh, they would have then lower energy. But of course, there is then a problem because these uh, uh, intervalley excitons would be uh, having some large mismatch in wave vectors. So the question is, what can compensate for these uh, uh, non-vertical transitions? And, and the answer that uh, Hanan had was that there would be a formation of uh, plasmons, but these are not standard plasmons. They are short wave and they actually have a gap. So if you look now at uh, intervalley Coulomb interaction, uh, they are charged, uh, uh, there, there will be spin conserving and they may lead to the formation of some uh, uh, non zero charge uh, fluctuations and they uh, would be short wave because we have now a large distance, so we have large difference in. Wave vectors. But to describe this type of physics, we have to go beyond usual beta salpeter equations. We have to uh, do dynamical uh, beta salpeter equations, and then they, of course, uh, it, it then it becomes uh, computationally more costly. So uh, this scenario uh, could then be tested against some experimental uh, measurements. So this is now done in collaboration with. Uh, Jishan and Kin Fai Mak, they were measuring um, optical uh, uh, differential um, uh, uh, optical reflectance spectra. And the focus was not now on uh, understanding all the features, but on understanding so called X minus prime puzzle, which is this uh, feature here. And what is interesting is that only appears in tungsten based TMDs and only for N-doping. So there, there is a very limited regime where this feature is uh, visible. And you can see now how, as a function of gating, when, let's say, neutral exciton goes down, this feature goes up. So it's like a redistribution of spectral weight. And we don't see that in, uh, let's say, uh, MO-based uh, uh, materials. We don't also see it in the whole-doped uh, tungsten-based materials. 
additional question of trying to explain this feature comes with a blue shift that is uh, much smaller in uh, hold-up samples, and also it's much larger in uh, MO uh, samples rather than the tungsten-based ones. There is a blue shift uh, here, but not, uh, not a very large one. So now we try to compare these um, uh, experimental results with theoretical calculations. So here is experiment again, and we are now focusing on this uh, uh, X minus prime feature. We see it here in the absorption spectra, and we also see that this blue shift of uh, uh, neutral excitons, uh, uh, neutral exciton is different uh, between tungsten uh, and uh, molybdenum-based TMDs. Uh, whether this proposed scenario of formation of uh, short uh, wave plasmons or not is really a conclusive proof for this puzzling phenomena, perhaps could be answered by some further experiments. And if we were to put uh, uh, TMDs on a magnetic substrate, maybe then we can further distinguish different scenarios. Another reason why magnetic substrate and uh, not just for TMDs, but other 2D materials would be helpful, is that we can engineer additional reactions, uh, interactions. So basically, if we uh, have um, some degeneracy, uh, we can remove it, of course, with magnetic substrate, or we can create some uh, quantum and topological states if we are starting with uh, non-magnetic topological material. Uh, Evelina and her collaborators were studying a very interesting uh, monolayer material. This is uh, bismuthine on the top of uh, silicon carbide uh, uh, substrate. And so what is interesting is that uh, a topological gap is huge, 0 0.8 electron volt. And uh, however, there is uh, valley degeneracy, there is no valley physics there, but if, would, if we would put it on a uh, magnetic substrate through proximity effects, then we can combine quantum uh, spin hole effect that is already experimental, uh, experimentally observed with many uh, uh, valley hole effects in just a simple uh, single sample. So with this, I would then conclude uh, non-superconducting uh, part of the presentation, and then I would like to shift to the superconducting proximity effects. Um, there are many motivations why superconducting regions could be of interest, but uh, for me, what I would like to see if we can use superconducting regions to uh, design exotic states that otherwise may not naturally appear in nature. Uh, we may uh, create then topological protection, and we may also create uh, spin triplet superconductivity. There are many ways how this could be done through proximity effects. But there is also something else that is interesting. Since we have uh, spintronics in the title of this workshop, we can use tricks and uh, design of magnetic structures to define nanostructures. So if we are thinking of uh, nanostructures, let's say semiconductor nanowires, we often think of them being defined by epitaxis. So we grow it in MBE, and that's it. But if we can define appropriate confinement and other features through magnetic textures, if we then reconfigure these magnetic textures, we may be able to reconfigure our wires. And in principle, these wires may be topological. So there are some very exciting things to use conventional uh, elements from spintronics to uh, design tunable topological states and uh, have, have some fun with them. So um, when it comes to topological protection and uh, excitement, uh, perhaps a uh, quest to uh, identify Majorana bound states has attracted lots of attention. And uh, there are many motivations why we would be interested in Majorana bound states, but one far uh, uh, reaching and ambitious goal would be to take advantage that their uh, exchange statistics, that their exchange properties are non-trivial, that they uh, acquire uh, effect that is uh, non-commutative, non-abelian. So if we uh, think about exchanging position of these two Majorana bound states, a result will not be just simple phase, but the result will be like a matrix uh, multiplication, which then uh, naively tells us that we may have a way to implement logical gate, because we put something in, but what after this exchange of Majoranas uh, happens 
is something different. So what comes out is different. So we may now have an idea for implementing uh, quantum uh, um, topologically protected gates. And uh, there is a recipe how these Majorana states could be realized. So often uh, what is considered that we need superconducting proximity because even those uh, reported triplet superconductors which are needed for Majoranas are not so reliable. Maybe it's not also the right type of uh, triplet superconductivity, but if we then combine proximity uh, induced superconductivity, let's say in a, a two-dimensional um, material such as two-dimensional electron gas or maybe Van der Waals material, if we have then strong spin orbit coupling and Zeeman splitting, then we may have all the right ingredients. However, uh, most of the efforts have so far been focused on one-dimensional geometries. These are typically one-dimensional semiconductor nanowires. Uh, spin orbit coupling is there. Zeeman splitting comes from applied magnetic field. And the detection of the presence of Majoranas that would come at the ends of these topological wires would be zero bias conductant peak that is, uh, that is quantized. We actually had such prediction a while ago, but the problem is that uh, this presence of zero bias conductance peak can come for many other uh, reasons, not just because we have Majoranas at the end. So what would be instead useful is to look at the different geometries where we could more directly probe presence of uh, Majorana bound states, but also to try to take advantage of the geometry that would allow their braiding. If you have one dimensional wire, it's not so easy to uh, visualize how this uh, exchange would take place. So for that reason, uh, we, but also uh, many other groups, uh, and Evelina will tell us more about that tomorrow, uh, have focused on two-dimensional platforms. Here is a platform uh, that tries to combine what we know from Spintronics. So we have superconducting uh, 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 material underneath. This can be something you know, very simple, S-wave superconductor. So we have superconducting proximity from below and magnetic proximity from above. What is uh, shown here is a little bit naive way of thinking about uh, magnetic tunnel junctions and their uh, resulting fringing fields, which uh, are non-trivial. Fringing fields are not pointing up or down. They are curving around. And this combination of uh, pairs of proximity effects can uh, transform two-dimensional electron gas precisely the way how we may want it. Uh, if we want to see why these fringing fields are important and how they can give us uh, not just Zeeman splitting, which is kind of obvious, but also spin orbit coupling. It's also useful now to go to uh, ideas from spintronics and uh, spin transfer torque because what people have been doing for 40 or so years, they have realized that when you are dealing with magnetic textures, you can uh, change quantization uh, axis locally along the direction of magnetization. And then this initial Hamiltonian uh, could have simplified magnetic term. We now just have a simple uh, uh, Zeeman field, but this simplification of magnetic term comes at the cost of complicated kinetic term. So this uh, uh, more complex kinetic term is nothing else than synthetic spin orbit coupling. So these magnetic textures can give us spin orbit coupling that initially our uh, material does not have it uh, itself. And ideas for that, again, has exi have existed for, for some time. And what we would like to do, we would like to take advantage that what magnetic texture may look like in spintronics is easily changeable. We can reconfigure that. So if we have some topological condition where by magnetic textures we form some uh, uh, effective wire, by changing direction of magnetization, our wire can be changed. So looking now from the top, if I have a uh, three by three array of magnetic tunnel junctions with uh, dot and x uh, defining direction of magnetization in or outside uh, of, the of the plane, by switching this uh, direction of uh, magnetization, we may then reconfigure these wires. So wire is then defined by magnetic textures, not uh, epitaxially. And uh, as we do that, we are going to then move Majoranas that live at the end of these wires. So we have now two-dimensional plane field to uh, manipulate Majoranas and uh, uh, realize them in a robust way. Now, 
this was the first attempt, and when one looks closer at the magnetic anisotropy and the way how we envisioned these arrays of magnetic tunnel junctions, there are clearly difficulties uh, in trying to imp implement them experimentally. So talking a little bit to our collaborators, uh, including uh, Andy Kent, magnetic uh, expert, we realized that there may be a better ways out. And we then tried to uh, en en envision what was available experimentally. So uh, Jawad Shabani, also at New York University, is an expert in growing epitaxial structures where uh, three, five semiconductors are com combined with aluminum. That would be one way of realizing two-dimensional uh, platform. Um, we have two-dimensional electron gas, and then on the top of that, we would use what is known from uh, spin transfer torque and magnetic nanopillars, because when we combine them, now we can use tricks from spin transfer torque or even spin orbit torque to change the uh, underlying fringing fields, uh, change magnetic textures, change the underlying fringing fields, and then modify this uh, two-dimensional gas uh, underneath and create situation that would support uh, Majorana bound states at the end. So we have uh, these uh, simulations. We had to do micromagnetic simulation combined with uh, solution of Bogolyubov of the Gen equations. And even though we stopped this work, uh, it has been picked up by people in Paris, and uh, Stuart Parking also, I think, is excited to go in this direction. So instead of uh, proceeding with magnetic proximity effects, let me go back to non-magnetic uh, platform and uh, just simple two-dimensional electron gas. So again, uh, uh, reminding uh, uh, us that uh, such high-quality two-dimensional epitaxial structures exist and that their transparency is nearly perfect, so we can see record values of Josephson current, then we uh, uh, can try to see how, without magnetic elements, these uh, uh, um, platforms could support Majorana bound states. And uh, uh, recently, uh, there is a work on so-called planar Josephson junctions, and there is some connection with what uh, uh, Fu and Kane did uh, 10 years ago, where in two dimensions we would form Josephson junctions, and it would be possible to have more robust uh, condition for uh, forming topologically protected states. We will hear more from Evelina uh, tomorrow, and she was actually involved in a very important experimental work uh, recently published in Nature. So these uh, two experiments by uh, group from uh, Charlie Marcus and Amir Jacobi were focusing on using phase bias to uh, obtain suitable conditions for topological superconductivity. Uh, what uh, Vijava Shabani wanted to do differently, we wanted not necessarily to uh, impose some phase bias, but use squid geometry to directly measure phase information. Phase information was crucial and squid experiments in, for example, detecting pair symmetry in high temperature superconductor. So it's a uh, well-known method of uh, extracting very important uh, and, and sensitive information. And the uh, squid geometry that uh, we focused on had this uh, uh, following uh, shape. But what was nice is that uh, two uh, parts of the squid, so two Josephson junctions, could be individually gated. Gating uh, changes spin-orbit coupling, but it also changes carrier density. We can selectively open or close uh, one of those Josephson junctions, so there is a, a very nice way to have reference measurements. And uh, what, uh, what one can then show is how this junction resistance changes uh, as we change one of these gate voltages. And this now allows us uh, to also compare uh, uh, theoretical predictions, uh, and that is uh, uh, one aspect of uh, um, non-trivial signature or, or topological signature of, of the system, is that as we increase in-plane magnetic field, we may have closing and reopening of the superconducting gap. Closing of the superconducting gap is trivial because magnetic field uh, destroys it, but the fact that it can be reopened when we increase magnetic field further, that is uh, uh, very important. Uh, one of the key signatures, and then uh, simulations also show that Majoranas would live uh, at the ends of such junction. But remarkably, uh, this was now experimentally confirmed. So what one can see here 
is that for the suitable value of gate voltage, there is reopening of the gap. We are closing trivial S-wave gap, and we are now opening uh, P-wave gap when magnetic field is increased further. So this is one important uh, and still very uh, rare um, support for topological superconductivity. We can then map when we sweep over different values of gate voltages where this S and where the uh, P wave, triplet P wave would be. But on the very same sample, we can complement that with, with phase measurements. And depending on the gate uh, voltage and magnetic field, we could see that uh, there is a very little change in the phase, or that this change in the phase is relatively large. So we see a phase jump, uh, which is a uh, signature expected from topological uh, 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 quantum phase transitions. And uh, modeling would just uh, uh, say what, what is expected, but experimentally we can see that. So on the same sample, we see what seems to be the first direct measurement of uh, phase information across topological uh, uh, superconducting transition, and we see closing and reopening of the gap on the same sample. So we are very excited about these developments. Uh, I'm running out of time, so let me conclude by mentioning first uh, some of the implications for the first uh, part of the talk, and that is magnetic proximity effects uh, in TMDs and other materials with strong Coulomb interactions should be studied beyond single particle picture. And, uh, of course, that magnetic proximity effects can be viewed more broadly than just a uh, curious and important set of phenomena, but really a general as a general tool to transform materials. In the second part, 2D platforms are particularly promising to create uh, Majorana states and also other uh, exotic uh, topological states. And uh, perhaps this was the first direct uh, confirmation of uh, phase information about Majorana fermions and the first measurement of this pi jump across topological transition. In terms of the next steps, uh, there, there are of course uh, many things that are missing because even if we agree that Majoranas uh, have been detected, the question is what to do with them. One uh, proposal that we have is, uh, it can be called X-junction because now in this X-shaped uh, uh, like structure, we could create either two or four uh, Majorana bound states simply by changing appropriate fluxes when magnetic field is always constant at the same direction. On the other hand, there are many uh, unexplored opportunities for 2D materials, perhaps even uh, TMDs, where one could use their natural two-dimensional geometry to form uh, many topological states and perhaps also Majorana bound states. Uh, here, there is encouraging effort, even though it's 1D, these are carbon nanotube uh, 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 proximity contacted by uh, superconductors next to magnetic textures from cobalt platinum, even though carbon nanotube has small G factor smaller than uh, in TMDs, they were able to see a large effect of these uh, magnetic fringing fields and creation of synthetic spin orbit coupling. So many, many things uh, are unexplored, and it's really very exciting to uh, be able to take advantage of the growing platform of two-dimensional materials. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, question about uh, the gated uh, MOSSE2. Uh, could you please explain the nature of this blue shift when you increase the gate voltage? Uh, okay, so I will probably be able to talk to you more in person. Let me just maybe first show you the structure. So uh, uh, 